All right, so today we're going to talk about 10 tips to improve your Guild Wars offense. This is a follow-up to my 10 Guild Wars defense tips video. If you haven't seen that, check out my channel. Uh, I'll put it in the video description below. And same caveats, this is not for top 10 GVGers. This is for people in low Glorious Guardian or lower, and it has a lot of similarities to my defense video. So let's get started because I hate how a lot of Epic 7 YouTubers have like 60 hour guides. I'm gonna try to keep this as concise actionable and of course squirrely as possible so number one concentrate your gear gear is very huge in epic 7 obviously and a common mistake i see people make is they have their gear spread across like 20 heroes that's fine later on when you have a crap ton of really good gear but in the beginning you're gonna want two really well geared teams to carry you through guild wars gear is everything and including gear is molas make sure you have six geared molded people even if you have to deal with elemental disadvantage and stuff having gear and molas is more important and it's better to have two well geared teams that aren't optimized for a specific defense than it is to bring in someone that has like an elemental advantage, but then their gear is like backup gear that's plus eight or whatever, you're gonna lose anyway. Uh, make sure that you build six characters with strong gear. Number two, build a speed cleave and build a bruiser team in the beginning. Get more as you progress, but that should be your starting point. There are always defenses that are easy to speed cleave, um, basically where if you go first, you win. Like this one, if you look at the second team here, Seaside, Yafin, Elena, if you can go faster than the Elena and get your cleave off, it's a good chance Yafin will die, possibly SSB will die. But this is not like the greatest speed cleave example, but the idea is basically you get really fast, guaranteed wins against a lot of team comps if you have a speed cleave. On a secondary note, um, you need a bruiser team because for the things you can't speed cleave, you need to have another option. You can't just have a speed cleave because then if you verse something that's really tanky, like maybe this second team here, made Chloe and A-Ravi, A-Ravi can survive a lot of speed cleaves and basically she's going to 1v3 the team after you do your rotation. So build one speed cleave and one bruiser team, and that's going to give you a lot of options to hit a lot more targets. Don't build two speed cleaves in the beginning. It's also going to be a lot harder to gear that. Make sure you start with one speed cleave and one bruiser team, and then as you get more characters, more gear, etc., you can progress and build out your kit. But that should be your starting point. Number three, be mindful of elemental advantages. Now, they go over this at the very start of the game, but people still don't seem to grasp this idea. Fire is strong against green. Water is strong against uh, fire. Earth is strong against water. Like all in dark is strong against light and light is strong against dark. Like all of this is very important because you can bring teams that kind of completely counter the enemy. Like this guild happens to have like nothing but ML5s apparently, so it's kind of hard. But uh, other guilds, a lot of things that you'll see that's common is, um, let's look at this top team. They have Ludwig in there, but you'll see early on a lot of teams that are like triple water because people are using their Wyvern teams on defense. And it'll be like Angelica, Luna, and like Sigrid or something. So just bring three Earth heroes if you have them geared because you're going to counter them so hard. The other thing about elemental advantage is how the AI operates, but we'll get into that right now. So tip number four is abuse the enemy AI. So the AI, I went over this in a defense video, does the same thing every time. So let's talk about AI in the context of baiting. Let's say that this team didn't have a Ludwig and had another water DPS. If you bring a fire tank, all three of their characters will never attack anything other than your fire hero. So you could bring a really tanky fire hero. And yeah, he's going to take a lot of damage because um, he'll be at an elemental disadvantage against all of them. But as long as he could survive, the other two characters on your team have full reign to do whatever they want because they will never, ever be focused. And that's why things like Fighter Maya, whose kits aren't that interesting, are so powerful because she's really tanky. And later on, dark heroes are everywhere, like everyone's rocking dark ML5s, and they will do nothing except beat on a super tanky fighter Maya. So make sure you understand how the AI works. And the other part about AI is understand how the AI will use their skills. Um, they'll always use S3 first. 
it's important to keep that in mind. All right, so if you have any specific questions on AI behavior, leave it in the section below. There's a lot to talk about there, but I want to keep this video moving along. Number five, and uh, I forget to do this sometimes because I'm usually recording my Guild Wars, but make sure you watch for artifact procs on match start and HP counts on enemy turns. So if you haven't noticed, when the match starts, sometimes something pops up on the character's head and tells you what artifact they're using. This is extremely important. Like you have to know if Arbiter is using Moonlight Dreamblade or something like that. Like that is critical information. And what sucks is like, especially because me, I record them. A lot of times the match starts, I'm talking and I'm like, oh crap, what artifact is he using? Because it could really dictate how you proceed to attack that team. Make sure you know what artifacts they're running by paying attention as soon as the match starts. The other thing is HP counts. You want to know how tanky they are to see which target you should go on. When it's the enemy's turn, if you look at the bottom of the screen, their HP will flash as they're using their skills. Make sure you're paying attention to that. Tip number six, attack from easiest to hardest. I can't stress this enough. Uh, for some reason, some people like to attack the strongest targets first. And that's idiotic because, as you all know, if you lose a character in Guild Wars, you can't use them in future attacks. This is even more important early on because early on, you have a very limited pool of geared heroes. You probably only have six, maybe seven. So if you lose a hero, your chances of succeeding in future Guild Wars is non-existent because basically you end up bringing someone that's like level 50 or has no gear or isn't awakened or whatever. Go from easiest to hardest so that you have the maximum chance of preserving your heroes. And if you lose your characters in your third match, it doesn't really matter because you don't have any more Guild Wars tokens anyway. Always attack from easiest to hardest. And the next tip, tip number seven, is kind of along those same lines. Make sure you yield if things don't go your way. Remember, if you yield, you don't lose the hero. If you lose the match but you yield, you don't lose the hero. A good thing to note also is that you can yield in the middle of an animation where your character is about to die. So let's say you screwed something up and Arbiter is about to descend his blade on you. Click that yield button, the animation will still play, but you'll notice that after you yield, all of those characters are still available for use in future Guild Wars. At least that's how it always worked for me. Maybe it's 50-50 or something, but anytime I yield before the animation ends, I've managed to keep the hero. So don't let yourself lose your best attackers for no reason if you have no chance of winning. The only time you shouldn't yield is if you're losing a hero you didn't want to lose, but you're going to win the match anyway. In that case, don't yield. But if you know you're going to be a guaranteed loss like you are banking on outspeeding their team and they happen to outspeed you, just yield right away, save your heroes, cut your losses. Tip number eight, in close matches, remember how much havoc you get for winning. It's very important and few people seem to understand this. So first of all, there's like a havoc bonus depending on um, how many members each of the guilds has. We're not going to talk about that here. But you get a bonus for destroying a tower. But let's look at this tower here. Well, now one of my guildies just happened to destroy it as I wanted to talk about it. But let's look at uh, this tower here. It has 20 Havoc left, right? So let's say the Guild Wars is really close. Like we're behind by a few points or whatever. If you attack this... You'll only get like 60 Havoc because you only get Havoc for the remaining life on the tower plus the bonus for taking it down. So in some cases, like people are always like, oh, I need to take the tower down, I need to take the tower down. But really, you'd get more Havoc for attacking a tower that's at full health and not destroying it because that usually gives you 120 on an evenly matched Guild Wars. So what's better, 120 Havoc or 60? Don't just blindly try to finish off towers. Keep track of how much havoc each tower gives. Um, the only reason to hit a 20 HP tower is if you think you have enough attackers left to take out the stronghold. Otherwise, it's almost always better in terms of havoc to destroy someone with full health. And remember, they don't care. At the end of the day, they don't care how many towers you took down. It's your total havoc score that determines the win. So make sure you're attacking targets that give the right amount of havoc. 
Now number nine is going to be kind of a more, I don't want to say advanced, but more complicated tip. Don't roll the dice. This is what people do all the time early on. It's a big mistake. What do I mean by don't roll the dice? So let's say, um, let me find a team with, here we go, Arbiter Vildred. A lot of times people want to roll the dice. They know that they can lose, but they're just feeling lucky. Like let's say, all of you know I use Judge Kisei a lot. Let's say I, an example of me rolling the dice would be saying, well, I know this Arbiter has Moonlight Dream Blade, but that's 20%, so I'm going to hit it anyway, even though I'm definitely going to lose if he Moonlight Dream Blades. That is a piss poor strategy in the long run, and a top end guild will never let you in if you do stuff like that. Because you should have a strategy that works 99% of the time. If a single proc on the defending team is going to cost you the game, it is not a good strategy. Do not do it. In the beginning, when you have really bad gear, really bad characters, and you're just trying to get draws, maybe you could go for that. But as you progress, you should never bank on the defensive artifacts not procking for you to win. Because even if, number one, on defense it seems to proc a lot more, everyone's aware of that. But even if it only proc 20% of the time, like the tooltip says, that means one in five matches you're going to lose. Really more because he can dodge twice with the revive, but let's say he only did that once. T losing one in five is a lot in the long term, so... Don't roll the dice. Come up with strategies where um, you can win consistently even if you get unlucky. Another good example is when you see like a speed defense and you just say, ah, whatever, I'm probably faster, I'm going to go for it anyway. Don't assume you're faster unless, like, I think a good rule of thumb is if your fastest character has like 10 to 15 higher base speed than their defenders, you can normally be pretty confident you'll outspeed them. But if you see a Basar on defense and you're going to bring a Basar to attack them, that's a 50-50, right? That's a big risk to take for a loss. Don't do it. Now, number 10 and my last tip, which is the most important tip, is communicate with your guild. And me and my guild actually do a piss poor job of doing this, actually. But communicating with your guild is is huge. I, I've played a lot of competitive games, and what do you always need? You need, like, back then it was Ventrilo, now it's Discord, whatever it is. Communication is so important. And the thing that you can get from talking with your guild is things like what artifacts people are running, how fast are they, what is their guild quality, all these questions that you don't know going in, you can get it if someone else attacked them. Like here, let's say I want to judge Kisei the first team, but I'm too scared that he has Moonlight Dreamblade. But what if my guildy attacked him and said, hey guys, by the way, that first Arbiter Vildred is on Alexa's basket. Then this is a super easy cleave target suddenly, right? Whereas if you didn't know that, you have to be really scared and come up with a completely different team comp to be safe. Um, what about this second team? Let's say that someone attacked them and figured out, oh guys, this is really scary. That Alina is 280 speed. Like, that's impossible. But let's say he said it, then it's like, oh crap, I better bring a Dispeller or something because I know he's going to go first. Like, maybe you wanted to cleave this because you think the Alina is slow and you think you could kill her before she puts up the invincibility. Knowing the enemy team's gear, speed, artifacts before you hit it is so huge because it'll control what comp you use to attack it, what strategy you take. I mean, it makes hard fights really trivial if you know all of that information. So that was the last tip. I'm sure there are other things I forgot to talk about. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. But I hope that helped you guys out a little bit on how to go about building a better Guild Wars offense strategy. Thanks for watching. I'll do more videos like this in the future. And uh, subscribe and like and whatever if you want to see more content like this. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.